So I have a little reading of the Picatrix here. I just want to give you a little context of where the Picatrix now lives. So these are all just different ways for me to show my respect for this book and the knowledge that it contains. So I've given it its position, tentative position in the in the overall kind of uh, meditation station here, meditation shrine, right? So there's different levels. The base level is kind of that which is, um, con you know, it's the foundational level upon which all else is built. So there's energy generating, you know, notion here, radiating theme. And the second level is where things start to become specific as far as what it, what is about me as a person, is about social justice here, but the Buddha, the calm, the, the circle, the Druidic circle, the different stations, eight stations, one of which is the Buddha himself, um, the crystal ball, what is about me, and here is my personal thing, the uniting of the polarities, the individu individual grail, the stick, uh, all the things that make me particular about my personality and things like that, my art, my um, various art, even higher up. Um, and the Picatrix book now has found its spot here, temporarily, until I organize its spot where it was... Um, <laughs> designed to be, and um, I've designed now this cover for it um, so that I can show it my respect and keep it nice, um, and so this is the Picatrix in its cover, and I will open it here in a few minutes for us to go through and do a little reading and give a little summary of what I've learned so far and talk a little bit about it. So I want to show the unveiling of the book here. So this is a design a wrapping design that Claudia helped me come up with. I asked Claudia because I knew she would just have an amazing strategy just because she's brilliant like that. Um, so here is here is the book and she she had these things about gift wrapping about these these little guys right here. I didn't think about this. I knew it was something like that but didn't know that that was the thing. I also asked Claudia if she would give me an example wrapping because I knew she would wrap the book really well. Um, so I'll show you how she ended up wrapping it. And this is a cloth from my uh, Halloween costume. I dressed up like Gandalf the Great. I dressed up like a young Gandalf. That's what my costume was. Uh, young wizard, which now is quite fitting. Uh -huh. So my Halloween was a way for me to apparently connect with my druidic roots. Um, so here's here's the book, right? Got the cord off. And normally it's not such a big process to get this off, but I only have one hand because I am considering practicality of of this, right? So she she folded this under here to to cover this corner and make it look nice. So it's added an interesting element to it. And um, and then what was the next? Oh, she folded these in. The last first time I did it, I didn't fold these in, so they were kind of floppy um, in the end. So she folded these in, and she also okay, let's unfold this one folded it in and she also made one fold initially right here and this kind of kept that cut corner this is an unneat edge right and she, that kept that cut corner inside here and so I knew she would figure out some really interest, interesting scheme um, to wrap this book up with and I cut this cloth out in this shape right and then I didn't cut the string I was thinking about cutting the string but I wanted to wait to ask Claudia right and she was she had the answer for me, and that was uh, that was what I needed. So, so that's that, and I got my uh, cover for the book. And why? N no, not why. Well, the reason I'm doing this because I sent the, the importance of this book and and what it represented and the consciousness contained within this book. Almost, it has a, a spirit, right? And it came to me at this point in my life because I was ready for it, and I needed it. It's my. It's the next piece of knowledge about the universe that I need to, to move forward in my uh, in my search. So uh, I have a particular problem about trying to harmonize humanity and this book has some answers, additional ans answers. And so one thing that I think was interesting that I'd like to point out before I get too further, too much further, is that this book was designed you know, by the, the theoretical author Picatrix himself, the philosopher. It was designed for professional wizards, right, in the medieval ages. From the period they said this was the magical book, the only in the most authoritative magical book between the fourth centuries and the sixteenth centuries. Think about that: the fourth century to the sixteenth century. For twelve hundred years, this book that I'm holding right here, that I have my hand on, was the truth of the world. This was the science. This one book contained the culmination of all 
thought, all the highest, hardest mystical thinking, scientific thinking of the day, of the age. Astronomy, astrology, um, or no, astronomy, geometry, arithmet arithmetic, music, languages, grammar, rhetoric. It was all, all those were the prerequisites for this one thing. Magic, right? This is what the wisdom the wizards knew, but actually, the real definition of a wizard, they gave a real definition, here we go, like page 18 or so, let's see if I can find it for you. It was brilliant because it was so different, okay, not, not page 18, the previous page, pick a tricks and practice, um, it said something about what a wizard is actually, um, hold on one second, let me find this for you, further reading, produce lethal potions, so they're giving a lot of Warnings, look, bold font of this series, you usually never bold stuff. Some recipes produce lethal poison. So they're saying this book, if you try to use it for bad bad ends, it will actually, it will put you on your butt, right? It will tell you what's up. All right, I'm going to pause this and look for this passage real quick so I don't take it forever. Okay, yeah, I found it. All right, cool. I'm just going to read you this passage. Let me zoom in so you can follow along. It's going to start like up here. Yeah, let me get you some light here. Okay. Picatrix is a product of an older world. They're talking about, look, this isn't the stuff that you're used to. Readers steeped in modern cult lore may be startled, right, based on what they find here. Picatrix is a product of the older world, and its magic draws on a conception of the nature of magic and the universe that differs in almost every imaginable way from today's occult traditions, which most people aren't even that familiar with to begin with, right? It's interesting. In the magic of Picatrix... The sources of magical power are in the macrocosm rather than the microcosm. Power is native to the universe, not to the mage. It's not about the mage getting super powerful. Vast currents of creative force set in motion by the Godhead itself cascade downward through multiple levels of being. They are refracted by stars and planets like rays of light striking moving crystals. Think about all these words that are being selected here. These are now the authors giving their interpretation of what this is. This is the most high level viewpoint in today's interpretation of modern language of what this text is because the rest of the text is going to be an old style language of how people used to think. They didn't think like us so it's hard for us to even wrap our heads around what they mean when we read the words that they write because they had different contexts in mind when they wrote them. They are refracted by stars and planets like rays of light, striking moving crystals, and descend to Earth with greater or lesser force depending on the complex geomet geometries of astro astrological relationship. Interesting. So there's energy being radiated from an internal source in the universe, and it's coming down. It, it ping-pongs off all the different planets to affect the nature of that energy, and it comes to Earth through some series of filters. Okay, now, who's a magician? What's a magician? The magician is the one who knows how to catch these currents at the moment of their greatest power. Catch them, not, do, not conjure, not do, catch them, right? Store their energies in material objects. Imbue material objects with energy from the nature of the universe. Appropriate with, oh, with material object appropriate to them. So pick the, en pick the objects that's going to vibrate correctly with that type of energy coming in and direct those energies to carefully chosen end. That's the key word, careful. So careful insinuates intentionality, meaning you're picking this one thing for a very specific reason. So that's what a magician is in this book. It's a very different conception than a modern-day notion of a magician that conjures things or that does tricks or illusions or all kinds of different conceptions of what a magician is. So I think that's the most fundamental thing to know. And I didn't think of a magician in the first way before, but it's interesting to think about the energy currents as being what we're catching, right? And that's kind of how my system of magic has been developing in my head, um, you know, on my own personal intuition of what I know about Druidism, modern Druidism so far. And this is different than modern Druidism a little bit because it's about the old magic, the old way of magic. There's a new way of magic, that's modern Druidism, and there's an old way of magic. This is the old way. And they said, you know, they said this is what they, what has been considered through time to be the dark magic, right? This is the dark magic. And they only started calling it dark magic because it gave people true power, true understanding of the universe. So they said, this is the dark stuff. Don't get into that stuff. You can play with this little fluffy stuff, the white stuff, right? But it's only until you merge the two together 
in a holistic approach to the universe that you really understand it all. And that's what the Picatrix has for me and for us together as we go through this and learn more about it.